be led out there by their rookie QB, a two-year starter at Notre Dame. It's Deshaun Kaiser. Okay, I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance. I thought he played fairly well overall. The, the numbers won't knock your socks off. Two touchdown passes and an interception. The bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with the receiver? They'll run it with Johnson. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12. Okay, there's a tone setter. First play from scrimmage. Stuff him in the backfield. You know what they were doing last night in the hotel room? <laughs> Visualizing exactly that. That's what they were thinking about. Making that play. Having leverage. Lower than the offensive lineman. Getting into the offensive backfield. Knocking someone down. Just what you said. Setting the tone early for this game. Jeez, you are fired up. When I see a play like that, I can't help it. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Come on, let's go. Right on, right on. on third down, Kaiser. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Trust me, Brandon, I'm not about to try and take your job. I can't do what you do. But that wasn't just three and out. That felt like three and backwards. That's exactly what it was. Uh, you can have my job whenever <laughs> you want it. Uh, the drive that you're looking for, though, probably going forward, bad start to the ball game. Yeah, not the way to get things going. He fought it four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. Jones on the return. He spins free. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. They'll be led out by the veteran quarterback, a multiple-time pro bowler. It's, of course, Eli Manning. Chronologically, he may be approaching that age where people are starting to wonder about him a little bit, but when you saw him play a year ago, he didn't wonder at all. He looked like he was right there in the prime of his career. Had his sixth 4,000-yard season and looked at his best still throwing the deep ball. First and ten, here's Manning. And it's complete to Antonio Gates. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. Do you get the sense, Brandon, that people are trying to retire Antonio Gates? They keep thinking this is almost the end of the line. And then he keeps making catches like the one we just saw there. He's the older rival, you're right. Just one of nine players in the NFL with 100 or more touchdowns. The numbers for Bell on the ground in the game last week. 12 carries, 75 yards. After the last game, they had plenty of reason to be confident in their running game. And even though they're facing a top-10 defense, they're not going to shy away from doing what they do best. Make them adjust to them. Make them stop what they do before they go to any type of a changeup. Now Manning throwing on second down. He completes it to Julio Jones. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Give him 17 on the pick up there. And the Texans also get a new set of downs. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you throw a lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can... Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. They give him a gain of 37. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Sammy Coates. His second touchdown on the season. And the Texans have taken the early lead. And the QB rating right now is sky high. Four for four on that opening drive. And it ends with a touchdown pass. Yeah, I don't know quite how to figure it out. I think I need my friends from MIT to come in and help me. <laughs> I think 158.3 is the number one. Yep, that's the, right? high that's the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. Justin Tucker for the extra point. 
And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? But well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offense will move a little bit better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And that one results in 35 yards. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They give to Johnson going right. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers even go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. It's a close game here early on. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. But they face a second and long to start things out. Johnson. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. That's how you get right up off of the map because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his yard the next run. Here's Johnson. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. It's not one guy, it's another with this defense. I mean, this is the number one unit against the rush in the entire NFL. They know how to cover for each other. And yeah, they've got great players. They also have very dependable players, too. Complete to right. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep. Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag. Completed it very well. On the run, it's Robinson. Even with the good move he showed, he'll be brought down short of the 15. Analysis of this first half. Now a second down throw for Kaiser. <laughs> and all the way down inside the five to the four. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. And that is incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Come on, let's go! One, two, three. Come on! 
Kaiser now on second down. And he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. Deshaun Kaiser, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. That's an old-fashioned death march there, partner. Took them a lot of plays, but hey, they did the job. And the defense always preaches getting off the field, making a play and turning it back over to their own offense. Unable to do so. A long, sustained drive by the offense. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. A 10-play drive that time, and it results in a four-yard touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is taken at the three. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Eli Manning and company getting set here as they head back onto the field. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. Brought in by Coates. And down he'll go at the 25. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Manning the throw on second down. This is Bell on the dump off. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Bell is so good at that. He just catches so many passes near the line of scrimmage. In fact, the unique stat line for him last year, he had more yards after the catch than total receiving yards from the line of scrimmage on the season. That doesn't even sound real, but when you analyze his game, you understand why a stat like that can occur. His ability to catch the ball, be elusive, and also strong enough to break tackles, that allows him to gain all that extra yardage. On first down, Manning. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tuck roll that they can fall back on anymore. Manning will try again on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Throwing his Manning on third down. Looking deep for Julio. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. I know exactly why I tried to throw the ball to Julio Jones there. He's never considered covered. He's either too fast or too strong. You always try and get it to him. Especially on those deep passes. Six-year man Marquette King on to punt. As he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Come on, let's go. They go play action here on first down. 
And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who, what, what defense you're in. That was totally a blown coverage. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have the show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven, our score. As we send you over to our headquarters in Orlando. And no update from Larry this week, apparently. We'll try again in week seven. But for now, let's get back to the action, ready to kick off the second half. This is fielded a couple yards deep. What a spin. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. The second half starts with a carry by Bell. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Give him 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, I thought he was a big-time player, great potential. But I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back. But now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wishing they'd taken him in the first. Looking downfield for Jones. That's caught inside the 20. And he takes us down deep into Cleveland territory. A big time play there for the Texans. 45 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Into the red zone now, Manning. Oh, it's incomplete. That would have been big in the end zone if he could have held on. Instead, it's second down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Manning now to throw. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. Brandon, some of those windows to throw the football. That... Manning indeed going for it on four. And got his man. It's caught. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. On second down, it's Bell. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. Got to figure now after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Manning going to throw. He's got that one complete to Eddie Royal. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I and mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. 
Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to milk the clock. Manning to throw on second down. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like he said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Breaking the tackle gates. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Now a first down carry by Bell. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. But that takeaway, partner, right there, that's a combination of coaching, execution, and absolute belief. Because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go, ah, this thing's pretty well done. But they still thought to themselves, if we can make a play, we give our team, we give our teammates a chance to win it. And that's exactly what they did. here in the fourth and if this team has any chance to win this football game their defense obviously needs a stop here they'll run it now out of the gun and they'll lose yardage here knocked back to the 19 yard line one of the bigger plays in the game thus far the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. From the gun, it's Manning. It's caught, and he will. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now Bell. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Manning looking to throw it. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. The offense on third down, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. To throw is Manning. And it's caught. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Danny Royal, his first touchdown on the year. And the Texans use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but 
Now I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. So they're going to go for two. Now Manning. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over. For Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Mario Williams in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Second down, Kaiser. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Third and long for Kaiser. He's got his target. It's Cobb. And he's going to be out of bounds at the 39. They chalked that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Now Kaiser. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. Kaiser. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Browns on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and ten. Kaiser yet again. Oh, Kaiser can't get away and he'll go down. Eric Walden in there to take him down. And the clock will roll. Fourth down, Kaiser, desperation time. And no, it's incomplete. 